Welcome in this partnership. Welcome both. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, sticking with us. I know uh, it's pretty warm in here and the bar is calling. <clears throat> I'm hoping that we can uh, keep it brief. Oh. Very excited. Oh, cool. Let's do this. All right. Thanks for sticking around despite the sauna like temperatures. Uh, my name is Catherine Bischoff. I'm the CEO of Sovereign Nature Initiative. And I'm Adriana, COO at Moonsama. And we are here to talk about our successful partnership bringing real life eco data onto Web3 and into gaming. So at Sovereign Nature Initiative, since 2020, we've been working at the intersection of ecology, oh, thank you, <laughs> economy and, uh, and technology. And in our world, nature is actually the most groundbreaking technology. And at Munsama, as you've just heard, we like to help businesses um, make the most out of NFTs um, and really unlock the true potential. And this is a, a perfect use case. Um, so we've been working on a model to bring eco data into gaming. And uh, yeah, this is what we're going to tell you. Yeah, so let's start off with asking some big questions. What if nature owned itself? What if it controlled its value? And what if it generated revenue by staying wild and free? So these are some of the questions and provocations that were asked when they really became the inspiration for founding Sovereign Nature Initiative. And our current project that you're gonna be hearing about now is really about bringing that to the next step and gamifi gamifying and uh, bringing ecological data into the Web3 space to benefit nature itself. So we call it the Play to Conserve Revolution. It's a very bold idea. It's new and it works and we're here to prove it to you. In a, oh, sorry. No, no, go, no, ahead. go ahead. It's you. Um, according to a study done in 2022 by Yale Program on Climate Change, 70% of US gamers um, are concerned about uh, the changes in climate. So this audience is primed for uh, uh, conservation movement involvement. So this is why we think this is a, a perfect group to uh, uh, include. Uh, the Play to Conserve model is all about harnessing the power of games and gamers um, and really getting them activated. Yeah. So let's talk about the problem and the solution and what do we mean by ecodata. So this is a, a, a solution that takes this play to conserve into, into, into the approach. Essentially what we're looking at here is a massive problem. This is a giant pangolin for those of you who have never seen it before. It's one of the most special species on earth and it's on the verge of extinction. There are actually only 70 to 120 left uh, in Kenya. And the solution that we're proposing is a play to conserve approach whereby we uh, enable online gamers to gain pangolin power. So what we wanna do is use that data to empower gamers to create funding streams for those who are protecting nature so that the value lies in nature itself. Our pipeline connects ecological nature-based data to digital creatives. So the unique value proposition is really about creating a connection between real life and virtual worlds and bringing more meaning into those experiences. The lions of Kenya can now start roaming the digital savanna like they do in Munsama's metaverse. In games and metaverses, players can integrate animal power or bring animal companions on their journey. In this collaboration with Munsama, money has flown to the Kenya Wildlife Trust, uh, one of our partners in Africa, and essentially it's enabling them to protect the ecosystem and ensure a healthy balance between humans and non-humans. This is really a game-changing proposition. It's decentralized community building for conservation. So our partnership, what have we done so far? Um, in March, we released the very first Wild Sama NFT collection, and it was built completely with the Moon Sama composer that you could just see in our previous session. Um, the raffle for whitelist was co done completely on chain, exclusively for the Moon Sama NFT holders. Um, many were left very sad that they couldn't obtain a lion cub. Um, but the good news was that we raised $100,000 for Kenya Wildlife Trust um, to support the research and the work on the ground. Um, it was a first great bridge between Web3 Gaming and nature itself. And we're going to keep building on that momentum. 
the next step for these lion cubs will be that they will be evolving into their full-grown lions. And that's where the eco data from Kenya Wildlife Trust, supported by a Sovereign Nature Initiative, comes into play. So let's elaborate on that a little bit. Let's go deep. Um, last month, Sovereign Nature Initiative launched the Decentralized Ecological Economics Protocol. We call it DEEP. Um, and what it means is that it brings conservation organizations' raw data that they're collecting from the animals in the wild to us. This data is unstructured, analog, some of it, and our role is to standardize and scrape it and digitize it so we can make it legible for our clients. When we process this information, we also brainstorm with game studios and designers using AI-generated mood boards. Um, the game developers then take that data, the statistics, but also the stories and game lore, and sorry, lore from the community, and use that to really enable an incredible asset creation for their user base. We do a joint launch marketing campaign, and the conservation organizations benefit from the proceeds that are generated. So deep data is really finding a new economy whilst making real life impact. Let's talk about this raw material, the data itself. The product offering weaves together three types of data, identification, movement, and story. So ID is really all about age, gender, physical attributes of an animal, like unique scars, maybe patterns, color of fur or skin, any type of uh, attributes that, you, that are being tracked. Movement can include geolocation as well as patterns of movement over time. So trackers like this fellow that you see in the photo use radio collar technologies to track the animals, check on the health of the ecosystems and the lions, and when they check in with that data and bring it to deep, we can then process it and provide updates uh, in the protocol. Storytelling is, of course, key to games and metaverses, and we truly believe that real-life stories can exceed and be more fantastical than made-up ones could be. We really believe that life exceeds the imagination, and we get that from the animals that we're protecting. There are lions named Scarface, Hunter, Sikio, and uh, Morani that live in the Masai Mara. These have become very, very famous lion because this unlikely alliance of four male lions conquered three prides and managed to establish a reign of over 14 years, unheard of before. And maybe some of you have heard of it through the BBC documentary, Big Cat Diary. And now imagine how these dimensions will come to life through gaming. Betrayal, alliances, broken pacts. It's a new, unique game lore that we can now all bring into gaming. So these endangered species narratives, they're not only exciting, they also give cultural meaning and show the complexity of our world's ecosystem. So what makes this really unique as well is the dynamicity of the data. So the avatars are dynamic as well. KWT gives us regular updates on the status of real life lions. We call it proof of co preservation and proof of coexistence. This uh, sustains the deep connection to real life and dynamism means that we can represent the full life cycle of an animal in a virtual world. The lion avatar that you'll see in Munsama, for example, is actually reflecting what's happening on the ground. So this is a true uh, application of data in the spirit of Web3, decentralization, automation, and transparency. What would the world look like and mean if the lions of the Maasai Mara are actually unfolding in a digital space? Morani and Scarface of the Marsh Pride, whose lives, lore, and physical attributes are actually manifesting themselves in online game interfaces. Let's talk a little bit about the tools. So the protocol and rarity index that we are releasing is a custom metric, here we go, um, that allows us to identify the uniqueness of an animal and their attributes. So first, you can browse the data animal collection, which each of the species is linked to the provenance of that data, so the conservation organizing, organization protecting the animal. You can select the animal's uh, rarity. Uh, so after choosing the species, you can choose the rarity, and you'll see uh, individual available data samples for, for that. The catalog within that, you can create on, click on 
uncommon, common, rare, or mythical traits. And there you see the sample size going down. So we're really honing in on the animals that are most rare, the ones that are being tracked. Thereafter, in the catalog, you can click on the animal that you're interested in, and it will basically pull up all the data that we have on the animal. So here you see left notch ear, it's got some scars, it has a certain age, perhaps it's had cubs, perhaps it's deceased. These, uh, these information and data can then be utilized for the mechanics of a game and really bring the utility and game ideas to the next level. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So this stuff always gets me exciting, like the previous one. Like I'm, I'm a gamer myself and a little bit of a data nerd. So when I see this, like my, my fingers start tingling. But let's come back to our partnership. Previous slide, please. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to talk a, bit, a little bit about the partnership and how an online gaming community became stewards of nature. So I think Adam already said, so like one of our key strengths as Moonsama is our community. They're engaged, they're, it's, it's like a kinship, like with the lions. Um, and for Moonsama and its community, we're always at the forefront of innovation. We always want to push boundaries. And when S and I approached us, we were so excited and we you know, could see all the possibilities. And the current cup holder, the current NFT cup holders can't wait to uh, take their lions on, uh, on an adventure. So I just want to show a little bit of what we're working on. It's still very early, uh, but this is what's coming. So you've been hearing a lot about the pipeline for Ecodata, but how does it work from a gamer developer's perspective and how does it work for the gamers themselves? And why is this uh, collection already so successful and making so much noise in the NFT world? Um, by the way, I just want to say, I really love how they look. We hired talent from Ubisoft and Disney and uh, to make these majestic animals come to life and we couldn't be happier. Um, so this is our first, uh, we spent some time, we weren't at the party, we were hanging out in the metaverse with our cup lions and uh, having a lot of fun actually. So here you see how our NFTs that are on OpenSea and uh, within Polkadot actually made it into the metaverse and we could just walk around and, and have fun together. So once these lions evolve into their full-grown counterparts, that's when you can also follow their stories, what they've been up to, and uh, yeah, see how they evolve. We are also, for the people that weren't lucky enough to get a um, Cub NFT, we're working on an interactive map uh, showing all the prides that we've been mapped out from uh, Sovereign Nature Initiative. Now, the locations are all uh, fictive because we don't want people to go uh, out to, to Africa and, and hunt the lions because you get a real cool lion if, if it's ancestral. Um, but here you can already take your lion on a little bit of an adventure and, and uh, look what, it, what it's doing. Uh, so very, very exciting. And this is already containing all the data of the lions. So I'm gonna, I can talk about this stuff for hours, but I just wanna give a little bit more of a tease. So this is also um, what we're working on, like a complex tribe system. So once your, your cub is evolved from um, cub to lion, you can then choose your own tribe um, and we can gamify that further. So it's just the beginning and there are so many opportunities to bring nature into gaming that we're really excited. Um, what I'm also excited about, like I said, we raised $100,000 in our first cup NFT sale. That money is right now making a difference in Africa on the ground. It's hiring staff, it's, um, it's investing in software. So we're really already making a difference. And it's actually a continuous cycle because on the secondary market, the royalties will flow also back to Kenya Wildlife Trust. So really cool stuff. And Adriana just mentioned the impact on the community. It's essential for us to be working with community-led initiatives. Our head of partnerships works with those organizations on the ground at a granular level, ensuring that the data provided is meaningful, accurate, and reliable. In this case, with the Kenya Wildlife Trust, these partners monitor and protect predators, so the cheetahs, lions, and leopards of the Masai Mara, but they're also 
providing training to the next generation of Kenyan conservationists, as well as raising awareness to local communities of the importance of these animals for the health of the ecosystem. So this dynamic partnership between Sovereign Nation Initiative, Munsama, and Kenya Wildlife Trust, I think we, we all see how it benefits nature and, and the organizations on the ground, but I also think that it's really beneficial for uh, the game developers and the gamers, because they get content that's unique and has never been seen before. So it's a powerful force for good. So over this last year, Sovereign Nature Initiative has been working with conservation organizations across the globe to onboard this ecodata. So you see here we have cheetahs, bison, taurus, wild horses, giant pangolins, bottlenose dolphin, mink whales, elephants. <laughs> the list goes on that we're onboarding. So we're bringing all of these animals and want to introduce them to the Web3 space. I'm going to wrap it up here. We strongly believe that the metaverse and gaming environments are not purely digital, but can be connected to the real world, to activities happening on the ground and make an impact there. So if you're a game developer or a studio or you know of them and you're interested in this, please help us spread the word and let's bring more ecodata to virtual worlds. Yep, and if you're excited about our story and Adam's story and you would love to build with Munsama, then please connect to us. Yeah, so we're here to bring play to conserve revolution really in high gear. We want to harness the power and the value of life-sustaining ecosystems. We know that we must protect the biodiversity out there. So let's bring real-world ecologies into Web3. Let's get deep and let's go wild. Would you like to, would you like to take some questions? Can or, or you? Yeah, yeah, you have some time. Yeah, no, I mean, you can I also think, give back life to, to those who are to behind bar, us. Right? So. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be here if you have questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine and Ed.